Hey y'all, Karen from the future here with a small announcement. I have started streaming on Twitch. If you are interested in learning a little bit more deep dive stuff about some of my roleplay opinions, or if you have questions for me, please join me on twitch.tv slash it's Karen Terry. Every Saturday Eastern time from noon to two. This is going to provide for your partner insight into your character. And that's really what the roleplay experience is all about. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about tips for describing locations. A good location description helps people envision the stage that the characters are on. It means that you and your partner are likely thinking of the location the characters are in, or the room that the characters are in, as essentially the same place. This way, the way that the environment affects the characters will essentially be the same to both of you, and you'll be able to predict what's going on in that area. So for these reasons, I'm going to provide five tips on describing locations that you can use in your roleplay posts. All right, tip number one, describe the location in the starter. The first couple of posts in a roleplay thread should set the stage for how the rest of the thread is going to go. So, if you are going to describe the location, I recommend doing it within those first couple of posts. This ensures whatever you're envisioning when you write the starter for that thread, your partner is going to be envisioning something similar, so that as you're going through and writing the replies and working through the thread, you're not having to change too much what's in your mind's eye as you're writing. After the scene is set in the starter, typically I don't mention too much about the location itself, unless it becomes relevant. I have seen role players use scene location as a way to pad out their posts with a bunch of information that we already know. It's not necessary to repeat things that were established earlier in the thread, unless for some reason they've become relevant again. So, in addition to describing the location in your starter, only mention the location again when it becomes relevant. Don't use the location or the setting as a way to just pad out your posts with extra words. All right, tip number two, consider the five senses. Describing the look of a location comes naturally when we're describing the location, but don't forget other things about that location as well. What sounds do you hear? Is the washing machine running in the next room? Are birds chirping outside? Maybe you can hear planes flying overhead or construction the next street over. The soundscape of your location helps paint a richer picture of what's going on around the characters. What about smells? Is rain coming? Do you smell flowers in a field? Maybe you're in a house that has pets and the house smells like cats. Maybe they cook with a lot of garlic and you can tell when you walk into the kitchen. And don't forget feeling either. Is it hot, cold, comfortable? Is it humid or dry? Is the furniture that they're sitting on plush and soft? Or is it stiff? Or maybe they've got it wrapped in that plastic stuff. Or maybe it's leather and it's hot and your character's legs keep sticking to it. Are your characters walking? If they're barefoot, they're definitely going to comment on what it feels like under their feet. Describing more than just the looks of a location will help it come alive for you and your partner. Tip number three, use your adjectives. When describing locations, it's a great time to pull out those descriptive words that we often toss aside when we're writing dialogue or action. This is when we actually might want to pull out that thesaurus. Are you describing how green the grass is? Let's look at the thesaurus for green. For example, verdant, grassy, leafy, rural, pastoral. Each of these words has a slightly different meaning and connotation, so if one of them is better than green, use it. The more important the location is to the scene that you're writing, the more care should be given to its description. It's possible and even likely you're not going to be coming back to describing this location at any point later in the thread, so you want to take that moment in the starter to really think about what words you're using to describe that location and if it really paints the picture that you want to paint. All right, tip number four, use your character's point of view. You can build character through the location. What would your character take the time to notice? What would they find important about the setting? Those things should be emphasized above all else when describing the location. This helps hit two birds with one stone. You're covering character development at the same time that you're ensuring that you and your partner are imagining the same things in the scene. 
So when you write your initial description of the location, I recommend going back through it and really thinking about it from your character's perspective. Is there anything else they would have noticed? Even if it's not super important to the scene, I would say add it in because it is important to their character development. This is going to provide for your partner insight into your character, and that's really what the roleplay experience is all about. Alright, last tip, number five. Introduce changes in the scene overall through changes in the setting. So typically in roleplay we describe the setting in the starter and then we don't refer back to it at all, and that is fine. If the setting doesn't become relevant again, don't bring it up again. There's no reason to bog down your replies with useless details that you've already established. But don't forget, the setting can be used to great effect when there are changes in the scene. Maybe the lights flicker during a really intense moment. Maybe when something romantic happens, your character imagines that the air literally smells sweeter. Maybe a chill runs through the room before something dangerous is about to occur. Your setting can be used to forecast the direction and tone shift in a thread long after it's been established. Anytime there's a major shift in what is happening, think about if that would change the setting, and then you can use the setting to really sell that change in your narrative. So these are five of my tips for describing locations to recap. First, describe the location in the starter. Then consider the five senses, not just how the scene looks. Make sure you use your adjectives and have them well placed to what you're really meaning to paint that picture. Don't forget, use your character's point of view when you're describing the location. And introduce changes in the scene through changes in the setting. So do you guys use any of these? If not, are you going to implement them? Are there additional tips that I didn't include that you guys think are important? Either way, let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget, as always, to make it a great day.